Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at troubleshooting the Lazy Boy three position footrest feature. The three position feature controls three different heights that the footrest will lock out. In a previous video, which I'll link to above, we covered newer Lazy Boy chairs that have that feature controlled by this black plastic part called the three position lock. The video we're doing today is going to take a closer look at older chairs that are set up with all metal parts that perform that function. So we're going to look at how to disconnect those units when they stop working properly, how to possibly rebuild them when possible, and also the possibility of converting your older metal setup so it'll be compatible with the newer parts so that you can keep this feature working hopefully for years to come. So let's start by looking at the metal parts we're going to be working with. Now there were a few different versions of these setups that were made over the years, but they have the same principle involved. This long bar here is the three position lever. There are different lengths and configurations, but again the principle on how these operate is all the same. This lever was attached by way of a small coil spring while this one has an attachment hook. This flat lever required two lock plates with a spacer while this dial required only one. And these ends are held together by these two little bullet pins and two accompanying springs. Now the problem is today the bullet pins are no longer available. But most of these other parts at the time of this video are. The good news is that most of these bullet pins when I rebuild these units are in good shape and can be reused. If the body or barrel of the pin is still smooth and is, doesn't have any gouges in it, it can be reused and will work. But understand as time goes by, fewer and fewer of these parts are going to be available. But I just wanted you to see what they look like so you can identify them more easily. Now we'll take a look at what it looks like on the chair when it's all put together. Here we have a look at the three position gear installed and assembled. And keep in mind that the only function of this three position footrest feature is to give you the two additional lockout positions for your footrest. If you disconnect or eliminate this, the chair will still work like a normal recliner. It'll extend all the way open and all the way closed. You just won't have your two in, position, in between positions. Now before you start on this, let's say you're having trouble, it's not moving smoothly between the positions or it's not opening and closing smoothly. Before you check this, you want to check your scissors. So let's open them a bit here. You want to make sure that your extension scissors are straight, not bent or damaged, not broken, that they're still, disc they're still connected here at the rear swings and attached at the footrest. You want to check both sides. Also check the toggle assembly. Make sure the toggle is still in place and intact, attached to the drive rod, and that your tension spring is still in good shape. If they are, and you're having trouble with opening and closing, the next thing to check out is the three position footrest feature. So let's take a closer look at that. I should have mentioned what we have here is a Lazy Boy wall saver recliner. And of course I removed the back and turned the chair upside down so that we could have this perspective. So if you need to see a video on how to remove the back, check the link above and it'll show you how to do that. All right, so now from this perspective, you get a better look at the three position setup. And what's really neat is you can actually, when you have it upside down like this, you can operate the chair and inspect to see if this is working properly. So let's do that. The pin drops to the first step and you hear a noticeable click. That's the first position that the footrest locks out. Go a little further and that's position number two. And of course all the way up is number three. So as we can see, if we operate this upside down, it is still working at the moment. What's gone wrong in this case for this customer was that one of the springs that holds the bullet pins in place stretched out and came off. So as a result, the feature was disconnected and parts were just hanging. Since the lock plates and the three position lever where the pins ride are worn and I know those parts are still available, 
and these bullet pins are still reusable and in good shape, I know I can rebuild this unit and that's what I'm going to do for this customer so they'll have new parts and this will extend the life of this feature for them. So that's what you want to consider if you're considering rebuilding. You first have to find out what parts you need and whether they're still available. As I said at the time of this video, the bullet pins, to my knowledge, are the part that's not available if you want to build, rebuild everything from scratch. But you want to check with your dealer or the manufacturer to see what, whether that's still the case when you go to do your rebuild. Okay, so let's say your setup is not operating as smoothly as the one we have here and you want to disconnect it for now. That's a good strategy because later you can always decide if parts are available you're going to rebuild or you're just going to leave it off or perhaps even convert it, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, the first thing you want to do before you disconnect is make sure that the chair is completely closed or either all the way open. If it's stuck in between, you do not want to remove or disconnect this because what's going to happen is when you pull a bullet pin out that's holding the chair in place, the scissors will either fly open or slam shut. And you don't want your hands in here when that's happening. So if it's stuck and it's in the middle, the first thing you want to do is with the handle, you want to try to work it back and forth and see if you can get it to open all the way or close all the way. So now we have it closed all the way. We know it's not going to move on us. We can go ahead and disconnect. I'm just going to remove the spring from the bullet pin. And now I want to push the bullet pins out. There's a little tension on them, so I'm just going to ease a little tension off the, with the handle so I can push them through. Now I've taken the rest of the pins and spring off. And now you can see the three position lever comes completely loose from the lock plates. And you want to be sure and unhook it at the other end so that it cannot get caught in the, the scissors during operation. Okay, so now even though the lock plates are still in place, they're no longer connected to anything. So let's check it out. We should have all the way open and all the way closed. For those of you that may be considering upgrading this to see if you can make it compatible with the new plastic clips, what you have to look for here on your rear swing on both sides is a cutout, an opening, like this one. Without this opening, there's no place for the three position plastic locks to attach. They snap into place in this cutout. And on these older chairs with the metal set up, you often don't have the cutout. So therein lies the dilemma. If you can order a new set of rear swings with this cutout and then get a set of plastic clips, you can convert this metal setup to the modern setup and still be able to get parts for it. But the problem with that is if you order directly through the manufacturer, based on the ID numbers of your chair, they're only going to send you parts that originally came on your chair. So if you're trying to do a conversion like this, you want to work with a retailer or a dealer so that you can explain the situation what you're trying to do. So those are your two options. If parts are still available, make sure you can get them first and rebuild the existing setup. Or talk to your dealer to see if they can help you out with converting your old system to a setup that's compatible with the plastic clips. Now I'm not going to show the complete process of rebuilding this because, as I say, as time goes on, fewer of these parts are going to be available and this is not likely to be a viable option. But if you find the parts you need are available and you want to rebuild, basically what you need to do is take a sheet of paper, sketch the drive rod, that's the square steel rod that goes all the way through, all the parts are attached to it, and then you want to make a detailed sketch of every attachment point, the position of each clip and each part along this rod and how it's attached. Be very detail oriented in that. I do mine with the footrest fully extended. I make a mark on the drive rod letting me know that that's the top side. 
and that also tells me the orientation for my attached handle. The scissors extended and this is the top side and your sketch should be based on that. So the position of each thing that you draw onto the sketch is going to be exact. So then you remove the clips and the fasteners that hold everything along here and you pull the handle out. The drive rod will slide out and the parts will slide off once you have all the clips and fasteners removed and the tension spring. And then it's a matter of sliding on the new lock plates because that's the part that needs to be put onto the drive rod and then replace everything else beyond that that you had to remove. If any of these other parts are worn or in bad shape, replace them at the same time, all in one step. Okay. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.